And I sought for a man among them that would stand in the hedge and make up the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But God said he could find no man among his own people. Ezekiel 22, 30. God said, I sought for a man among my people that would stand in the gap and make up the hedge for the land, this prey that was walk with him, do his will, be obedient to him. Some man somewhere in that age that would be sensitive to his purpose and his will and be willing to die to himself and not arrange anything. Just simply be willing to pray and live a holy life to back up the prayer that he might make up the hedge and stand there in the gap and be able to hold things together at the crucial time the adverse time, the trying time. But he said, I wasn't able to find one that was among his own people, his own chosen. And I sought for a man among them, God said, that would be faithful and obedient and do exactly what he wanted them to do. And he said, I couldn't find one. I couldn't find one. There wasn't any. And I sought for a man among them, that is, his people. The religious people. the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But he said, I couldn't find one. I preached on this text, I don't know how long. One time I was in, out of Kingsport, Tennessee uh, at Mount Como. And God laid it on my heart to preach this message. And when I finished, one of the great prayer warriors that I've known in my life came up and said, you preached that for me today. And I sought and I looked for someone among my people. That would be willing to pay the price to make up the hedge. God has been seeking so long among the religious people in all parts of the earth that he could depend on, would stand by his word and be faithful and making up the hedge. The hedge has to grow and the hedge is on a line. It has to be straight. It must be upright, it must grow and flourish. And he said, I've, I've sought for a man or a people or a person from among the believers, among the followers, that would be willing to make up the hedge, do some planting, some growing, standing against the winds, holding fast at the pressures of evil that come up against it and push through to try to see what can be done to break it down 
said I was trying to find a man who was willing to pay the price to get the head jab. And he sought and he searched and he looked. Make up the hedge by assuming the responsibilities of dying and giving all over to God without smiting the rock. Without forgetting at a high. To make up the hedge that God's will might come forth with beauty in an alignment with his will that we wouldn't let evil break through the camp and destroy the little ones. And he said, I sought for a man among them that would be willing to be a hedge made up against the wiles of darkness that the tempter comes to destroy and uprightness in the word of God and truth and holiness and integrity and humility and childlikeness we can't get the heads to grow without it this hedge is much as there is within us as we become childlike and genuine and true blue so that I tried to find a person to be willing to make up the hedge stand out against the things of the flesh and for the things of the kingdom of God many times I would find the people and I thought they were going to stand with me I'd have fellowship with them we'd have a great time but they didn't stay with us long so God had worked with them so I thought they'd stand with me in the desert they'd stand with me in the oasis but when I got in a hard place and was a little dreary and things didn't go good and didn't have much they'd slip away from me I was alone again he said I sought for a man he said I sought for a person God the mighty God of the universe sought in those days he sought in the next day in the next century in the next century in the next century So he sent his son and he stood in the hedge and made up the gap. Still seeking for persons that will actually really, true, wholeheartedly will be as a hedge, a stay in the storm, and adversity, and darkness, to stand like a light like a beacon, yes. but in humility, in purity, not in fanaticism, but in his likeness. And I sought for a man among them that would be willing to make up the hedge, assume the responsibility, assume the place, the calling, the purpose, the shield, it's like a shield. He said, I tried to find someone like that in my people. And then furthermore, I desired that they'd stand in the gap. That's where there's no hedge. That's where there's not much of anything. The gap, you know, you stand there and, and it doesn't break through. You hold it up. He's trying to get someone in the hedge. Build it up. He's trying to find someone to stand in the gap. Isn't this a message? All I have is the word here. He was trying and has endeavored through the ages to find men, a man, a person, 
that will actually do his will. And not try to instigate or manipulate or try to work anything out or work something up or just simply follow. He said, I, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. That's for the people. That's for the salvation of the lost. That's for the church. To become the church. To become one as God and Jesus are one. That I have sought for them. I have looked for them. I have waited for them. This isn't some idea, this is truth. Because we're very weak. Stand for a while. Are we going to stand always? Are we going to be willing to say yes? Or are we going to draw back? And No, we're going to step forth and say with all of our might, we're not going to give way to the flesh and the devil. Amen. We're going to say yes to the will of God and say yes to Jesus. Yes. He said, I couldn't find one among his people. Here it is right here in the book. I didn't write it. It's written several hundred years before I was born. And see, I have to die out morning to night in order to qualify and to do what the Lord would have me to do from morning to night. Just like you. There's no difference. And he said that would make up the hedge. I said when our twin daughters would get in the kitchen and leap and yell and jump to try to become cheerleaders without the team, and I'd see such enthusiasm and such earnest dedication and Oh, they thought it would be so great if they could ever be cheerleaders. I thought if I could find some man with the same enthusiasm, the same interest, the same joy, the same glory and power, that would get all out for God, I believe we could make up the hedge and stand in the gap. But he said, he in this case, he said he wasn't able to find any. So I've trusted that there's several here that'll not fail. And we're just awfully weak, you know. When we think we're strong, we're not. It's when we know we're nothing. That's the only time he can use us to make up the hedge and the gap. This hedge not made up without quite a bit of prayer. And also devotion and sincerity and honesty and the love of the word and the love of God and we can't get the hedge made up if I do not love my neighbor as myself right. and if I don't love every one of my enemies as I love my friends I'll never get the hedge made up right. the only way I can get the hedge in is to love my enemies as I love my friends and I can't do that because carnality will not allow it it has to be cleansed out to get this hedge put up there. It's got to be cleansed out so the love of God can come in to give me the strength to get the hedge made up. And it comes by loving my neighbor and my enemy. Jesus said, love your enemies. And a man can't love his enemies in himself because carnality won't allow it. It won't permit it. But when carnality is cleansed out by the blood and by the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit can come in if he can find the man that's willing to pay the price, yes. which he seldom ever found True. in the ages. True. And some would start, but they get fanatical, radical. Or they'd get off somewhere. Fail someplace. Or get to thinking they were pretty good and say, I'm really something. I can do something. Go out, show them. And then everything goes down, the hedge can't be made at all. He just wipes it out. He said, I looked, I sought if I could find someone. See, this is the Bible here. If I could just find a person that would make up the hedge and stand in the gap. But we can't stand in the gap if we're wishy-washy and if we let some of the crowd sway us. If we're just looking for blessings. 
See, so many people are just looking for blessings and signs and, and that's what they want is blessings and signs. They're not willing to go through the fire and be, they're not willing to be thrashed and then broke up and crushed in the jaws and separate the chaff from the reel and put in an oven and baked and killed and as made us bread to feed the world, make up a gap like that. Pride prevents us from the hedge. Prayerlessness keeps us back in faraway country. Self-will smothers us out and we cannot hear. And the things of the earth are so attractive that we go blind and we don't know anything about where the hedge is to be. And the source of it and the growth of it and the alignment of it. He must be first. But everyone that places Jesus first and won't get out of balance, he's able to make up a good hedge. May not spell well, may not be able to pronounce big words very well, may not be able to carry much of a load, but if he's in earnest with all the soul and all the heart and all the energies and may stutter a little, stammer a little, but if you hold steady and be pure and holy, God can help him to make up the hedge against the wiles and darkness and rage to try to keep us from God's will. And he said, stand in the gap. Stand in the gap. Now to stand in the gap, the only way we can stand is by trusting and obeying. And the only way we can trust and obey is to come to the end of self and let self be in the background and given away to God and then we step forth on the limbs of trust and obedience and we press by death and by prayer and by doing God's will and then he brings us in to stand in this gap to make up an intercessory prayer. that he won't destroy the land. The people won't be lost. And he said, I tried to find them. But he said, I wasn't able to find any. What is a greater tragedy than this? That God uh, that has made the universe and he's hardly been able to find a person in an age that's willing to really let God lead them. Not try to work anything out or up or around, but just simply let the Holy Spirit lead. Oh, that really gets on my heart with power. Is this getting in your heart like it is mine? Now, if you're in the hedge and the gap, you're awfully happy. At least you're encouraged. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> encouraged. Yes, sir. And you're striving because you love your neighbors yourself and you're so happy you want everybody to get what you have. They can't have it, but they can have something just as good. And you are determined to put the kingdom of God first and let him lead. Then he's going to work it out and help us to make up the hedge and give us the strength to stand in the gap so he won't be disappointed over man. Oh, that hurts my heart. Oh, if that gets in your heart like mine. Can you tell that? Are you able to tell that in the Holy Ghost? So the cry of my heart is that I, you and I would be faithful never grow weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not 
being faithful to the assignments, not attached. You see, as long as I'm attached to some part of the world or some little love of the world or some little thing in the world, then I, I'll never be able to be trusted in the hedge. And if I'm not completely obedient to God, then I don't know where the gap is anyhow because I'm blind. The only one that can find the gap is the one that has the light within to direct by the Holy Spirit where the gap is. Because in the flesh we go blind spiritually, we cannot see. That's what Jesus said. They have eyes, but they don't see. He said they have ears and they don't hear. He said that this people draws nigh to me with their mouth and with their lips they honor me. But he said their heart is a long way off from me. They're religious people. They talk religion, theology. They talk all about marvelous things. But he said, their heart is far from me. But I'm so glad that we can be nigh. That he dwells within us. And that we are his. And he is ours. And he never fails. And when our heart is striving to do this, we are encouraged. When we are genuine, we are thankful. I'm grateful. I'm delighted and yielded and bent to the purpose of God. And we will do what he says to do, no more and no less. Be faithful, be true. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge. Stand in the gap before me for his people. But he said, I found none. I trust it's not going to be the case in your life or in mine. I trust that we will. You know, one man said to Jesus, he'd go with him to death. But when he came to die, he denied him. And then cursed and said he never knew him. Told him he would. And he sought for someone that would follow and do God's will completely and entirely. And always do God's will and not our own. There isn't anything else but this. This is absolutely all there is. And yet God wasn't able to find anyone that would do it in those days. Trust in our day, it'll not be, this. It'll not be that way. But we're going to have to do God's will. Faithfully, and not work out things, but follow. Not try to arrange something, but follow. Since the first century, the church has been likely to follow by boards and councils, by men talking it over. So when the Holy Spirit leads, he gives the revelation of what God's will is. And we have to die to get that. And self doesn't want to do it, so we, we bypass it and have a council. And we have boards and we talk it over. See, the Holy Spirit knows where the hedge is. The Holy Spirit knows how to make up the gap. And we must follow by the guidance of the word, the Holy Spirit. And all else is going to be lost. And every man in this place and every woman, you'll see it just instants before death. You'll see if I could have only heard it. Now, most all of you, I know, want to hear what I'm saying. Most of you. Ninety-some percent, I believe. But you see, the vast majority don't know anything about what I'm talking about. Unless the Holy Spirit reveals it. Now, if the Holy Spirit reveals it, then we get in on it by God's grace. And I trust that we will not let our flesh the carnal nature that touches me, defeat us from 
doing exactly what God says so that when the book is written after a while, it won't be that verse about us. Because unless we die to self and obey, that's what it'll be. Unless we follow, unless we're all for God, completely for Christ. And when this occurs, the kingdom will come. The kingdom. And when the kingdom touches the earth, he'll draw all men to him. He'll change men of all types and kinds with great power. He will change them. I've been privileged to stand before God in the spirit that if the presence were to come and stay a while, well, I know it would change all atheists and infidels in just a short time. I know that. Yet I know nothing other than I am needy and that God is able. So this verse has been on my mind today. While I was crying out, I see that, oh, it's touching me now. So I praise him for your heart that's crying. See, your heart must cry to get this. Your heart must bend. Your heart must be willing. Not to be anxious to worry. No, but be submissive to rejoice. Not to create upheavals, but rather a rest in this adventure of going with God following Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise his name. Oh, I was, uh, it was really in my heart. So precious, isn't it? So it's been the cry of my heart to do God's will. Because there isn't anything else. There isn't anything that's going to matter at all. You can get millions, you can get great corporations, you can have thousands and millions of workers, but unless the Holy Spirit leads and we let God have his way, it's just our working things out. He wants to be the leader. He must be. He wants to be, but we have to die to ourselves and to every situation in order that he is able to work through us the will of God. And the will of God, following Christ, he leads us into all truth. For when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he heareth, he will speak and he will show you things to come. When you follow the Lord, he sends the Holy Spirit into the life and guides us into all truth. Just like tonight, he revealed to me that she was just saying he was there all the time. And been on her heart by the Holy Spirit. I didn't know it. And when she said it, it was like an arrow into my heart. And I thought, oh, I am so indebted to Jesus. You've heard me say that, but I've got to say it more, as much as I can. Because if we don't, we're not going to be able to stand on the edge and make up the gap. And unless we praise the Lord and rejoice and pray and obey and separate ourselves from the world and cease trying to do a little what we like, the hedge will not be made up. The gap will be empty. And God said I couldn't find a person that I could trust to do it. Does this stir us up? Yes. See, it's, uh, it's a challenge, isn't it? But it's an open door. See, he wants us wholehearted in this. I mean completely and entire in this. God has been so disappointed with man and women. Only a few have been willing to pay the price and do God's will. But this is something to rejoice about. That the Lord would be so merciful to teach us this so we'll not fail. 
in his purpose and his will to do. Thank you for praying for me. Time has gone fast. It always does when the Lord leads. Amen. This is more important than all the sights of the world. Amen. God's word tells me he wanted his people to know this thousands of years ago. I praise him tonight for all of you and for his presence here. I need him more. I need him much. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.